Yo, Crawl here. Hey guys, and today we're gonna do something different, I guess. We're gonna start a new series, at least for like two or three parts, so you may understand how to run your bot with Docker. And how to do that, we're gonna go over that real quick today. Um, there is not much you need to do, actually. But one thing you can do is to test your Docker build locally, is depending on whether you're on Windows or on uh, Linux, on Linux, it's a bit easier to install Docker. It's just a bunch of commands. You can find them on the Docker page. If you're on Windows though, you have like two choices. And one of them is either you install VMware, I think it is. And it will basically just set up a VM because that's what Docker needs, right? It's like uh, Docker containers are like tiny VMs that, that just run independently on its own. Or you activate Hyper-V on your Windows computer. You need to restart after that. And then you can use uh, Windows VMs natively without having a VM software installed. Regardless of that, there is documentation on it, how to install Docker, how to get it running, how to get it running on a Linux PC or how to get it running on a, uh, on a Linux server or on a Windows server. I'm not gonna cover that. We're just gonna take a look at how do you get your bot to run on Docker. So the first thing we need is we need a Docker file. It's just literally called Docker file. And in that Docker file, we need to, we need to put in some information and it's literally just plain text we need to put in. And it has like keywords like from, so, so you get a, from, from a base Im image, you get something. The base image we're going to use is node eight. I'm sorry, node eight, Alpine. This uses uh, Alpine Linux which is a very, very tiny Linux distribution. And this will make your uh, Docker file very, very tiny compared to if you would install Ubuntu, for example, right? The Ubuntu Docker image is about two to 300 megabytes big, which is insanely big. And an um, Alpine Linux uh, image is around 50 to 80. So you definitely save on space there. Uh, the next thing you can do is label, which is key value. So we can do maintainer. And the value of that is basically just I crawl and then my, my email right there. Now the next thing we need is, is a work directory. We're just going to do this in the user directory. We're just going to put it into source and call it Yumeko. And then what we do is we copy over the package to JSON and the package JSON log, log JSON. And I'm, I'm so not used to being like the file being called package log JSON instead of like package dot log, like it is on yarn, where it is a yarn log file. And we're just going to copy that into the work directory now. Uh, the next thing we need is we need to run some commands to install packages we might need those packages include, for example, if you install, if you're in the package JSON, you install uh, Disco.js from GitHub compared to from NPM, you would need to install Git because like Alpine Linux doesn't come with anything. So you, you, practically you need to install all the build dependencies yourself. What that means is we need to run apk add update. That's the first thing we need to do because it's like the app get, get, uh, app get update. And then we just do apk add no cache because I don't want to use any cache here. Then we do this virtually call this build dabs. And we just add like the basic things. Like, like this is all really we need, like git curl, python, g++, uh, g++ yeah, uh, and make. So we can at least build, like if we have any dependencies that need building, they don't need any special permissions, but they need building, like just uh, UWS, for example, or what was the other thing that needs building? Node Opus, right? All of them need, need any, we use Node Opus. Well, actually we don't use Node Opus. We don't use anything in here. We use it in the, in the music bar tutorial, but this would require build, uh, build tools. So now the next thing we need is, uh, we're just gonna do, npm install 
after that we do apk delete and just delete the build apps again because this is this was this is literally just creating a virtual environment kind of and calls it build apps installs everything in there and we just npm install and after that we can just uninstall everything again because we don't need it anymore and why that is the case because obviously those things take space away so the more things you remove from your docker container the tiny it is and you don't need them at runtime you only need to compile or build now we just copy over the rest we just do that with a simple dot dot because we copy from this root directory here we copy it over and then we need some environment variables now this is very important because uh, we we don't use the the config.js way well we could right we could theoretically we could just copy over the config file here and then it would like just read the config file but what I what I usually do is I I make my 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 environment variables like this and just what was the second thing we had I think it was a prefix so just do it like this we don't need to fill them out in any way and the last thing we need to do is we need to run a command which is going to be node and you make it out so a lot of a lot of people I see what they do is they install PM2 on Docker and then run PM2 on the Docker container. But this is completely besides the point because you can just run node yumica.js and if it ever crashes, it will just restart automatically. So it is basically PM2, just a Docker container. Like it will automatically restart when it crashes. So you don't like so this node you make a thing is not an issue. Like you don't need PM2 or anything else to run to run this thing. Now this is our Docker file, and we we are also going to use a different thing here, which is called Docker Compose. But yum. So Docker Compose is very important if you want to have uh, if you want to bunch together. A few docker containers because usually your bot is not going to run on one docker container because you will have a database or you will have multiple databases so to get around that issue is you don't want to put your databases into your bot container because if your bot container crashes your database crashes now if your bot container crashes right now we don't have any database in it right it's literally just a bot the database will not crash so the database containers, they will just stay online and keep on running because they don't encounter any issues. So now the bot container will crash because it encountered an issue and it will just restart and connect to the database again. This is way better handling Docker containers than just bunch everything into one container and then like somewhere, like when the database encounters an error, your bot crashes. When your bot encounters an error, your database crashes not very optimal at all and what we need in here is you just specify a version of uh, docker compose which is going to use version 3 because it's just going to stay on track and not going to use any outdated things so for the services we're going to call it uh what is it unica right you can just call it give this the name of your service now the next thing we need is we need build for example to test it out this will be changed later when we go into production because we cannot use build there. Now, now obviously we have those environment variables, right? And one of them was token and one of them was prefix. And this is pretty much it. I don't think we need anything else because we don't have any other Docker containers we need to rely on. So for the token here, what you basically do is, don't worry, I'm going to reset this, so don't even try you just copy it in like this and for the prefix you do the same thing you just put it in like this and it was actually like this right yeah so and this is basically your docker container what you do now is now that everything is set up you just um open your your command prompt or like your powershell and just type in docker compose uh, up 
I think. Yeah, you can just type dark no. Why? Oh, I cannot type environment. <laughs> That's why. And now you just now you basically just wait. And what it does is it starts creating a network because we obviously need a network to connect to the outside world. It will build a container from scratch. So you can see like it starts building like the node eight Alpine container. It first needs to download it and then it starts building it and it will go through all of the steps we specified in our Docker file here. So first it will do the work directory. You can see here and it will do the copy of the package JSON, and then it will run the APKs. You can see here it installs everything. Now the next thing it's going to do, it's going to copy over all the files, including our config.js. And then it will set the environment variables and then it just executes the code. This is depending on how, like, how big or how good your internet connection is, by the way. And the other way to have this on, on production then, we're going to go over that after this is built. Actually, I can go over that right now. You will need to change this line here. Like you will need to change the build and you just change it to image and then put in the image on your, on your Docker account. I will show that really quick too then when we have, when we are finished, because I already have two on there. And there is a second option you can set. I forgot about that. It's got restart and you just set it to always. And what this does is basically just, uh, it installs, uh, it restarts the container when it crashes, which is what we want. So now you can see Docker container is completely done and running. It starts up, it attaches it. It says the others is ready. If we go to Discord, you can see I type in white ping, pong, and it's up and running. You won't, I don't have any logs for commands here, but you can see it's, it's up and running and working. Now, about the environment variables here, this was not needed yet because I'm just gonna shut down the Docker container real quick. Because right now what we do is we copy over all the files. So this includes the config.js file. So it will just, it will just work regardless. But if you really want to use the, the environment variables, like I do, you don't need the config.js file. So what you, what you just, what you need to do is though, you need to change something. You see here token and prefix. You just remove the require basically and do process.env. This just means it will grab the environment variables that are called token and prefix, obviously. And will basically just fill them out with those. So now if we run Docker Compose up again, oh, we need to build it again. You know, you can force stop Docker container, but I would not recommend you doing that. So we just run build again. So you can see it skipped all the steps one to five because it's already in cache and I didn't change anything in the Docker file here, but it detected that there were changes in the file system. So it would just copy over the files and then run step six to eight. And now you can see it's still online, still working, even though we changed the line that we do not use the config.js anymore. And if you type in wide ping, it already works right out of the box. So this is going to be part on, uh, part one from my Docker container tutorial, and we're gonna we're gonna do a bit of more advanced stuff later on, where we add two more containers here. One of them will be a Postgres container, one of them will be a Redis container, and then I will also talk about how you connect them with each other, and how you get access to the Postgres container from the bot container, and how you get access to the Redis container from the bot container, so you can talk with each other, like the containers can talk with each other. But that's up for the next episode. So see you guys until then.